let's make a pot holder with the pot holder loom. This is an 18 peg loom and we're gonna make the diverging corners pot holder. It makes four small mitered squares that change direction. You can create this simple design with no seaming. This easy loom weaving pattern is fully reversible and works up quickly. Let's make one today here on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. This pattern has written instructions and links to right and left-handed video tutorials for your convenience, as well as a link to the chart that we refer to in this pattern. Please visit the link down below in the video description for a link to our blog and for the detailed chart is available at Piglet's Potholder Patterns, Diverging Corners 18, and that is shared with permission under Creative Commons. For this particular pattern, you're going to need 36 loops, but you're gonna need 20 of color A and 16 of color B. And of course your loom, this one has 18 pegs across on each side. And I use a uh, crochet hook kind of at the end, but you can use a weaving tool as well. So grab your supplies and we will begin. First, let's begin with the warp, which is these vertical loops here. We're going to take contrast A or color A and put it across the first half of the loom on the odd number pegs. So peg one, peg three, peg five, peg, whoops, I missed that, there we go, peg seven, and peg nine. All right, once you reach peg nine, you're going to duplicate that again on peg 10, and then we're gonna work our way on all the even pegs um, to with, with contrast A, okay? So we're gonna have 10 loops across. We just did 10, we're gonna do peg 12, peg 14, peg 16, and then peg 18. Now that you have that sequence, you can just fill in the rest of these with your contrast B. I'm using purple here. I've got yellow for my A and purple for my B. So these are on pegs two, four, six, eight. So we have, uh, let's see, 11 and peg 13, peg 15, and peg or pegs 17. And there we have all of our loops filled up for the warp. Now we'll do the weave. I will be referencing this chart off to the side, but we actually have detailed written instructions on how to use this. So if you prefer written instructions, uh, that's how I'm going to give you the verbal ones here. Otherwise, you can just look at these. Um, all the vertical lines here represents going underneath that uh, those sets of loops. And then if it does a little long, if it does a dash like this, then it's going over the loops, okay? So um, this is uh, under and this is over. All right, I have contrast A. We're gonna work in the same sequence that we did on our warp as we do on our weave, except now we're going under and over and all that. All right, so with uh, A, we're going to weave under one, over one, nine times. So under and over. Make sure you're grabbing both legs of your loop. Okay, so for row two, we're going to begin with B and weave under two. Place that loop. And uh, whenever I stop, I like to put my finger here and then look over at my direction. So you'll see me do this a bunch in this pattern because it's going to change a lot. Um, none of these rows repeat each other. So uh, we've gone um, under two. Now we're gonna weave over one, under one, seven times. So over, under, once, twice, that's the third time, fourth time, fifth, 
sixth, and seventh. And we're gonna weave over two. Make sure this isn't twisted and go over the last two. Go ahead and push those up and grab A. We're going to work row three. We're gonna weave over one, uh, under two. So over one, under two. Mark that. And we're gonna weave uh, over one, under one, six times. So over, under, this is once. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now weave over two, under one. So over these two and under in place. And now row four, under one, over one, under two. So under one to start over one and then under two and then mark. Now we're gonna weave over one, under one, five times. So over, under, one, two, three, four, five. And now weave over two, under one, over one. Place. And with A, we're gonna begin row five. We've over one, under one, over one, under one. And uh, over one, under two. And now we've over one, under one, four times. So over, under one, two, three, four. We've over two, under one, over one, under one. All right, now row number six with B, we're gonna weave under one, over one, two times, under, over once, and that's twice, mark it. Weave under two, and now weave over one, under one, three times. So one, two, three, and weave over two, under one, over one, two times. So under one, over one, under one, over one. Make sure to check that you haven't skipped any pegs here. You can already see our first two squares coming together. Now for row seven, with A, we're gonna weave over one, under one, two times. So over, under, and that's once and twice, mark that. Weave over one, under two, so over one, under two. Weave over one, under one, two times. So over, under, once and twice. Let's see. And then weave over two, over these two. And then weave under one, over one, two times. Yeah, under one. Over one, under one over one, and then under one for that last. Okay. And row eight with B, we are going to work under one, over one, three times. Under, over one, two, three, Make sure mark after that over. And then weave under two, over one, under one, over two, mark that. And then weave under over three times. So under, 
over one, two, three, and that last one is an over, so then you place it. Okay, and now we're on row nine. This is at that halfway point, so you're gonna finish this one out, and then you'll be repeating the um, A again. So on row nine, we're doing A. We've over one, under one, three times. So over, under, one, two, three, and then um, over one, under two, you're actually going to go over two now. This is this one's different. And then under one. And now over under for the rest of the row. So for three. So over under one, two, three. And I'm just going to push these in, make sure we've got enough room for the last of it. Use your fingers or you can use the back of a crochet hook. Now that we're at our halfway point, there's a good spot to do that. Okay, row 10 with A, we're gonna weave under one, over one, three times. So under one, over, once, and here's two, and three. Mark after this one, and weave under one, over two, under two, kind of like we did on that last row. And then over one, so let's mark that. And now we're gonna weave under over three times. So under, over one, two, and three. And that last one is an over, so we just place it. And that is row 10. With B, we're gonna begin row 11. We've over one, under one, three times. So over one, under, one, two, three. And we've over two and under one, over one, and then under two. Weave over one, under one, the remaining part of the row, so three times, so over one, under, that's one, two, three. There we go. And row 11 with A, you're gonna weave under one, over one, two times. That's one and two, mark that. Weave under one, over two. Under one, over two, marks that. Weave under one, over one, two times. So under one, over one, once. And that's twice, mark that. And weave under two, over one. So under two, over one. And we've under one, over one, two times. So under one. And then under one on the second and over that very last one. And now row 13 with B, we've over, under two times. So over one, under one, two. We've over two. And then weave under one, over one, three times. So under, over one, two, three. Let's see, under, over, under, over, under, over, and then mark that. And then we weave under two. And weave over, under two times. So over, under once, and over, under. You can pick up this last one and place it and put down. And that's kind of how I end up doing these last few rows. I just end up picking them up. So if you want to see me do that, um, I will continue because I'm all the rest of these rows I'm going to have to show you. So <laughs> I usually skip some of these when we repeat some rows, but we're not this time. 
So uh, row 14, we're going to, with a weave under one over one, get that placed under one over one, and then um, under one over two, okay, and then uh, weave under one over one four times, so under over one, two, three, four, mark that, and weave under two, over one, under one, over one. So you only have to pick up this last, or second to last one, and place both of those. All right, let me make sure and get myself a little bit more room. Row 15 with B, we're gonna weave over one, under one, over two. So over one, under one. So you're just picking up that second one. And over two, mark that. And then weave under one, over one, five times. So under one, two, three, four, five. Remember the last part of that sequence is an over, so you mark the next one as over. And then weave under two, and then over one and under the very last one. And then place those loops. And then row 16 with A, we're gonna weave under one over two. So under that very first one. So under over two, mark that. And then weave under one over one six times. So you can actually pick up a couple of these that we're gonna go under in place. So that's one, two, and then the next two, three and four. And then five and six. And as I get down halfway, I need to place it over here to hold. Okay, so I've done my six repeat, and the last one is an over, so we're gonna be skipping this one here. And then um, we've under two over one, so under just these two, and then we place, and we're done with the row. That was easy. <laughs> All right, two more rows left. Go ahead and make some room. Row 17 with B, we're gonna weave over two, so that's real easy, over two, and then under one, over one, seven times. So I'm going to pick up these next two here. When I say the next two, obviously we're skipping one in the middle. So over, uh, I'm sorry, under, over, one, and then two, and then we're gonna do three and four, and then five and six, And don't forget that seventh repeat here. And 
over is the ending of that repeat. And so now we're gonna leave under the last remaining two. And pick them up and then you can place and finish that row. One row left, row 18 with a, I'll give myself a little bit more room here. And this one's easy, real simple. We're gonna go over under nine times. So over one, under one, and continue to repeat. So I'm gonna continue mine. You continue yours. Pause your video as you need, obviously through this video, if you can need to pause and slow down or speed up, you can always do that. All right, I'm coming down to the end. The last one is under. And we are ready to bind off. So look at that, isn't that pretty? I love it. So we're going to bind off now. And the way we do that is we just um, begin to take it off with our crochet hook. I like to start one before the row I'm gonna work. So I go in this corner and pick up this very last stitch here go to the next one and lift up and over and that's it <laughs> just slipping the stitches across so all the way across and if you see me do it on other pages you can um or in under video other videos you can lift up some of these and place them on the loom as you go across to uh, keep that tension and then uh, relieve the tension when you're done so i'm going to continue working all the way around my loom pause your video and i'll show you how to close it up and see what this looks like when all of the tension is out of it and when it's drawn in all right we'll see you there all right i'm at the end i've picked up my last stitch here and i'm going to go ahead and grab the beginning one that i started with and pull that through and it makes a nice little corner there. Go ahead and pull this out, even it up, fix your tension if you had left them on there. And then I just like to pull it around the back and pull it through another set of loops and then under more. <laughs> Just as many as you can get underneath there to uh, give it some tension to stay. There we go. And some people like to keep their loops on there. I don't. I don't like to hang mine. I put mine in a drawer, so I don't need that extra loop because I it tends to get caught on things to me. So I love this design. I hope that you enjoy it. Trim off any extra little... Um, scrappy parts or scrappy parts. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this diverging corners pattern. Be sure and check out our other patterns. We have a playlist below and if you want to seam them together. I love how this looks like these interlocking pieces. There is a version of this one in an, a 19 peg version and it looks like a straight line across. So if you don't like an overlapping look and you really want it to be um, more symmetrical, um, let me just grab that. Here's one right here. You can see how it pulls this here. When I say symmetrical, I mean like you could literally cut it in half right here and um, it just looks slightly different. So you can see how these little squares are not merging and you can see these are, they kind of overlap like this. So these butt up to each other and then these um, overlap, they overlap like that. Anyway, you may not be able to tell. Some people are really detailed and they prefer one or the other. If you did the 19, a little tip, I might do a video in the future. Let me know if you want to, but a little tip is you can work the first few um, rows and then um, you can place, say like number four, you could place it right on peg three, just double stack that and then continue on with your pattern. You're just going to need to make sure and squish these rows up more to allow more room as you get further on down. So that's the tutorial today. Have a great day and happy knitting, crochet, and weaving. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.